All right. Thank you, Rajiv T, for doing this. Happy New Year and welcome back. Uh, you are a savior for us. A lot of students messaged me uh, uh, to make this video on Trump, uh, find a, like doing another extension on the ban. I want to know what, what what's going on. What do you think? Let's begin. I always like to present information in in a pyramid format. Hmm. Start with the bottom line first. Some of you are very busy people. You don't have time for all the spiel. Yeah. And then go on giving more and more information. Happy New Year to you and to everybody who's watching this. I hope you guys have a year full of contentment. I know I will after uh, this jackass gets thrown out of the White House. <laughs> um, I'll talk about that in a couple of minutes. But basically, <clears throat> the status quo is exactly as it was. Nothing has changed. Mm -hmm. So on December 31st, he put back an extension. <clears throat> uh, keep in mind that this extension has been kicked to the curb the initial ban has been kicked to the curb by the courts. Mm. So anybody who wants to go to the court can get a ban exemption, but you still have the COVID-19 problem. Mm. If a local consulate is not doing business because of the COVID-19 outbreak, you won't be able to get around that. Mm. Think about, so status quo remains, there's no change. That's the bottom line, but a little bit more information you have three moving parts in the visa stamping process right now. Number one, can, can we can we reframe the bans? What were the bans? So there were there were there was an April ban and a June ban. April ban uh, last year was I think the green card, and June was the non-immigrant visa. Mm -hmm. Basically, the ban said if you are not already in the United States, you're out. You can't come in. Your right. family can't come in. You can't come in. Okay, so. After Trump puts in this ban in June, State Department is scrambling. So wait a minute, you have to have some exemptions. You can't just, the, the business will get to a standstill. Mm -hmm. So then they made some exemptions. Mm -hmm. So I'm assuming that those exemptions will continue as they are. All right. So that's the history of the first two bans. Yeah. December 31st, there was a lot of argument I'm reading. I don't have anybody in the White House that reports directly to me, but I'm reading in media just like everybody else is that there was a lot of debate within the Trump White House whether this ban should be extended. Mm. Because if you're a lame duck president, you're going out, what is the point? Also, your ban has been kicked to smithereens by the Ninth Circuit. Mm. Um, California courts, uh, actually the district court, California court have already issued a preliminary injunction. A preliminary injunction is a big deal because when you file for a prelim preliminary injunction, what you tell the court is that, I think I'm gonna win in, win on the, uh, in the final analysis. And the court says, uh-huh, we think you're gonna win too. Let's put this in place. Mm. So likelihood of success on the merits is a major part of grant or not grant of a, um, a temporary injunction. And we've got the temporary injunction. Mm. So there's really no point in this nonsense. Yeah. And the only reason he put it in place is because now when Joe Biden walks into the White House and he says, this is reversed, the American workers get, oh, this guy's anti-American worker, which he's not. Mm. Yeah. Because if you look at the composition of the workforce, they say that, well, November figures are, there is 6.4% or whatever percent unemployment. But in the IT industry, it's 2.2%. You see, because you can't dump apples and orange, oranges together and say, I'm allergic to fruit. Well, what exactly are you allergic to? What is harming right. you? Right. Okay. So this whole thing was basically a political ploy to mm. make Mr. Biden look bad and this jackass look good mm. that he is helping the U.S. economy. Remember, he uses a lot of H-2B visas. H-2B visas, they've been working hard to keep in place. Mm -hmm. The agricultural workers and yeah. uh, you know those those kind of visas they've been keeping in place. But that is that is that is the name of the game. That's how this game is played. This guy needs to be impeached again and we are pushing for it because if he gets impeached again he can't run for president again. Mm. The ban is extended until March 31st, I believe. Right. Yes. 
do you feel that once uh, Joe Biden comes in, he's going to revert it or yeah. like he's going to be under the pressure that if he reverses, then people are going to, you know, think a bad of him? Look, this guy did not win on a restrict immigration platform. Look at the Biden, look at the published Biden agenda. Increase legal immigration. Yeah. Okay. Think about it because we are losing youth at an alarming rate. I don't know, uh, almost like 80% of our population is going to be over, over 60 and we have no more workers left. So we need younger people. Let's get risk. So all in all, we are no worse than we were yesterday, but we are no better either. If somebody is in a hurry, they can file a lawsuit. To come back to the original point I was making. So right now getting a visa stamping has three moving parts. You have number one moving part is your ban then are you ban exempt because mm. you were already in the United States or because you're an essential worker or because you're a medical worker? And then um, if you are not automatically exempt from the, from the ban, do you come under the Department of State exemptions? That's the second moving part, which mm. were a lot more expansive. Yeah. And on top of all of these, you've got the emergency visa issuance where once you are, have qualified, can you still get an emergency visa appointment? Right. So you have all these moving parts and, and things are just a complete chaos. Yeah. This man has been the worst poison for this country that I have seen. Mm. In, I came to this country in 1987. He's the worst president. So you do feel that once Joe Biden comes, he probably will revert the order. So I think it's inevitable. Yeah. If I were Joe Biden, I would not pick and choose executive orders. I would just say the batch of last 30 executive orders is revoked. Mm. But revoke them in batch. And uh, Joe, if you're listening. <laughs> <laughs> that would be nice. <laughs> I don't really care. Uh, yeah. I, have, I, I have a conversation with myself. I have you. I've got a couple of people listening to me, even yeah. if they don't. You got to say what you got to say. Yeah. Okay. So I, I think they should revoke these executive orders in batches. Mm. rather than uh, revoking them in, in discrete measures. Somebody should sit down and go over and say, okay, from 10052 to 10072 are revoked. Mm. Uh, and 52 is one of ours. And right. before, I think it was 42 or 43. Yeah. So that's how you do it. Yeah. Well, hopefully that's that's what happens. And hopefully now my audience, uh, like all the students who are worried and people who are worried, uh, they have the information. Again, thank you so much. I, I really appreciate your time and hopefully see you soon. Talk to you soon. Absolutely. Be well, everybody. Happy New Year. Take care, guys.